Alright, let me guess. You want to play a flashy magic user, but you also love to be in the front line and show off your rockin' abs. You don't want to play some wimpy blonde boy going pew pew behind your team, right? I mean, why would you want that? Blonde people suck. Is that her worst skin? <laughs> Maybe. What? What do you mean? I mean, she, there's a lot of Ari skins. In this. Exactly. You need a beefy boy who can use magic like a pro. This is where Siles comes in. Siles fights for a cause, he doesn't hide behind forces like a cowardly king, and he's a genius tactician, like me. Like I said earlier, Silas fights for a cause, and if you want to learn about him, we must talk about that cause and what led him to lead it. So, please join me as I show you my beginner's beginner guide to Silas, the Unshackled. Birthed in Dregborn, or Dredgeborn, I'm not really sure how it's said, Silas discovered his magical abilities at a very young age. Being Demacian, he turned himself into the Mage Seekers. An elite group focused on finding and imprisoning all with supernatural powers. He would have been incarcerated on the spot if not for his unique talent for sensing magic around him. With this ability recognized by the Mage Seekers, they decided to make him a lapdog, finding all the mages in Demacia and, well, incarcerating even the ones who could hide it the best. He did start to notice one little flaw in their, um, in the mage seeking business. You see, any poor mages were locked up immediately. Any royal or even middle class citizen who exuded any level of magical power was given less than a slap on the wrist. Some being able to become political figures inside Demacia. This blatant hypocrisy sowed the seeds of doubt inside Silas's mind that would soon bloom into a beautiful revolution. Eventually, through these mage hunting expeditions, Silas met a young girl named Kyra, who willingly gave herself up to the mage seekers. Seeing a little bit of himself in the girl, Silas took pity on her, but, uh... Well, as soon as they made contact, Silas absorbed Kira's magical power, and may have accidentally, may have, sort of, may have killed a couple people in the area. <laughs> including his mentor, which was kind of a bad look for Silas. So after that fiasco, Silas was locked up inside the darkest depths of Demacia. He was named the most dangerous mage and was given petricide chains as a gift for this title. Uh, petricide is, uh... A magical nullifying mineral, by the way. Basically, he was Demacia's highest threat because he had Delson Rowe from infamous Second Sun powers. Or that guy? Anyone even play that game? I'm gonna touch everything. While in a cell, he begged for revolution, garnering hate for nobles and any of their followers, calling them swine and sheep, respectively. He spent decades fantasizing of a world where mages are seen as equal and are allowed to see the world without steel bars blocking their view. And, you know, also maybe wanted revenge and wanted to murder any royal who got in his way. Eventually, thanks to a magical descendant of the Crown's Guard, Silas learned the secrets of Petricide, and, well, he used the magic encased in the mineral to escape his confines. Uh, as he hid on the outskirts of Demacia, Silas amassed a rebellion of mages, but he, he never said that he led them. I in his eyes, they were all brothers and sisters, all equal in their goals to take down their oppressors. He's just the one leading the charge. It's different. I it's like socialism. I love socialism. God, I love socialism. With the help of Silas' new regime, he began to sabotage and execute Demacia's nobles. Now, Silas has kind of realized that a bunch of mages from Demacia aren't really going to help, so now he's exploring the Freljord to amass more power and a bigger army. Uh, specifically, a uh, magical power in the old tales of Lysandra and the three sisters? Women. Something about Freljord. Um, but the crazy thing is, like, you, you wouldn't think he would need more strength. His kit's insane! Like, there's... N I can't imagine him being any stronger than he already is. Oh, right, I have to I have to talk about the kit first so that you know that, right? Okay. Let's go on to the kit. 
Patricide Burst is Silas's passive. Every time you use an ability, you gain a stack, and every time you auto attack, it consumes a stack. You can have up to three stacks stored at a time. These stacks increase your attack speed drastically and give your attacks a unique property. When you use a stack, your auto attack does a bunch more damage scaled with AD and AP, and also does splash damage around Silas for a reduced amount. Without your stacks, your auto attack is not worth using, the windup is slow, and the damage might as well be zero. Usually engage with your spells and then spin to win them, you know? When you don't have a stack up, you don't want to fight, but near the end of the game, you'll be having stacks up constantly because your skills will constantly be off cooldown, so make sure you're always playing off of cooldowns near the late game, but be sure to only poke and make trades in the early game. Be sure to be actually using these stacks, though. Uh, if you don't use an ability to, re to regain a stack or auto attack at all, these stacks go away after 4 seconds. So if you're not doing anything, you're just wasting stacks and basically wasting free damage. Silas's Q is Chain Lash, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Silas slams both his chains down in front of him, leaving a small magic orb on the terrain. The chains deal an alright amount of damage, and the initial attack slows for 1.5 seconds. The magic orb explodes after 0.6 seconds, dealing a solid chunk of damage to all those who stand in it. It's definitely a weirder ability and takes some getting used to, but I'm sure that you can get used to it after a few matches. Silas's W is called Kingslayer. And he has the Kingslayer nickname too in lore, which is stupid, because like, Silas has not even killed a king. He's barely, he's killed like a bunch of smaller nobles that just happened to be there. Like, Sion has killed a king. Why doesn't, why isn't he the Kingslayer? Why doesn't he get his W be called Kingslayer? What, whatever, why, whatever, whatever. So W is a point and click that lets Silas dash towards the enemy target and deals a pretty solid amount of damage. If your target is an enemy champion, you heal an, uh, uh, an absurd amount based on your missing health and AP scaling. This heal is what makes Silas such a threat. I'm not, eh, and I, would, I wouldn't say it's busted, but, I, but I'm not saying it's weak either. It's a little overtuned. Uh, be wary with this tool, though. If you use it too early, you won't have the survivability in a fight because you won't have anything to heal yourself after you are taking chunks and chunks of damage, which is kind of a problem for Silas. So usually you want to use it later, or you could use it early and just pray that your cooldown's off in time. Another way to use this is to use it in the middle of a fight after they've used about half of their damage so that, you know, the other half, they have to burst down and then while they're waiting for cooldowns, you're also waiting for cooldowns and you can just smack a W. You'll still get a bunch of damage in while you're waiting because you have all your other skills to deal with while they are useless. And honestly, this isn't in the script, but this move is so fucking good. It feels so satisfying, but so I've had so many problems with it. But like, this is your main thing. If you want to play around any tool in the game or in the with this character, you have to kind of play around this, but not too much to the point where it's reliant on it. I did eat that honestly? <gasps> Hit me! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! In the <laughs> Silas's E is a two-parter, abscond and abduct. Abscond is a small dash. It doesn't seem like much, but this is such a vital utility to it. It's really strong. You can use this to dodge skill shots, gap close, jump over walls. It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's just another dash. A lot of characters have them nowadays. But when you're playing in, against a, no, a non-mobile laner, it's so good. It's so good. And then after you use abscond, you can recast E to cast abduct. Abduct is a very slow skill shot that drags Silas to any target hit to explain his cause a little bit clearer. It also does a decent amount of damage uh, on contact and it knocks up and stuns for about 0.5 seconds. Abduct works beautifully with your dash, which is why it's the recast. You can basically just dash in any direction so you can make sure that the minions aren't going to block you. And then shoot out your chains, grab them, and just get right up to you and just burst all your stacks with the uh, Petricide Burst. It's crazy. It's it's insane. It's an insane uh, move, and it's a huge gap closer for Silas, and it, I would say it's probably one of his um, most entertaining moves, at least. Alright. Silas's ultimate is ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, so if you're around an enemy champ, you can click R on them. Congrats. You now have their ultimate ability. That's it. Yeah, I mean, 
you just steal it. You just steal it. Um, and a D alt actually gets converted into AP. It's slightly less AP than if it was normal AD, but it still converts into your damage so that if you take a Lucian ult, for example, it's still good. It's just, it's just crazy. I mean, the one drawback is that you can't retake an enemy's ult for twice their ultimate abilities cooldown. So you can't have a crazy ult all the time, but you still get to steal their ult at least once. You can also see if you can take an enemy's ult by this little circle underneath their feet or around their player model. That is kind of an easier tell than to just be do the math in your head. So, But, oh my god. I'm sorry, I can't get over how fucking cool this move is. You literally just Uno reverse card. No you a motherfucker. Do not fuck me over in this. I swear to god. Do, you do stop. Win. Please. Do not be shit. Oh, my. Oh! That was actually clean as fuck! Puck. That was actually Puck. I, like, it's it's just crazy. Anything you could do, I could do better. You'd feel like, whatever. I'm done. Oh, yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah, I can do that too. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Mordekaiser. I, I can't show all of the moments that stealing an alt has saved me in a fight because it would make this video huge and just way too long. But no, it happens a lot. Like a shit ton. Like an unnecessary amount. Hell, it's so sudden that sometimes your allies have no clue what the hell you're doing, Ron. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> Like, all right, who ordered the tower shot? Quite fucking sad. Fucking middle of you. No one would be happy in that. Uh... Yeah, check it. Yeah. I wonder what else. Oh, I'm coming up. Okay. Oh, yo, 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 yo. oh, wait, I, I fucked up. I went wrong way. You die. Why are you not dead? That ain't me. Oh, wait. Wait! That was awesome! That was, that was bait, bro. Thank you. <laughs> you. You thought I was the, you thought I was an idiot, but really, I was Silas! The smartest man alive! Oh, we oh, and um, if you want to know what skills you max uh, first, it's W, Q, E. I think that's the best version. It just works out. Cool? Cool. Oh, and uh, items and runes, just show them on screen. If you want to take these, you can. Again, just look it up if you want to know super well. I just go with whatever I'm told. I'm a, I'm a fucking... I'm a sheep. I'm sorry, Silas. All right, let's talk about counters and playstyle now. Generally, your main counters are people who can either zone you out, like Velkaz and Anivia, or champs with huge bursts, like Katarina and Tristana. The reason for this is because, as Silas, you want to get in on your enemy and push them back under tower and just completely burst them down so they never want to fight you again and basically countering their mistakes uh, for pushing up this doesn't work with zoners as Velkaz can zone you from halfway across the map he could be in spawn and he'll beat your ass I mean the biggest problem is that when you get zoned out you take too much damage and then when you by the time you want to all in they just completely melt you it's not even fair even with your W you will just get melted it's so uh, watch out for zoners uh, the reason that burst champions are so difficult is because the whole point of playing Silas and using your W is that it scales dramatically with missing health. So if you hit them when you're at 20%, you get up to 60 near the end game, And that's a problem when it comes to uh, characters like Tristana because her bomb goes off when you're at half health and it will kill you immediately. So you either use your W early and you get way less health regen or you die. There is no in between. I know I did it with the W, but generally when it comes to Silas, there isn't really there a skill where it's like, This move is literally broken! Play around this! This, 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 this! It's so good! Oh my god! It's broken? How did Riot release this? It's because Silas's damage is all kind of mediocre. But that's because he's meant to stay in the thick of it for a prolonged amount of time. He does mediocre damage, but it's constant. And that's the biggest part about Silas. 
uh, you're constantly playing around cooldowns because that gives you stacks. Your stacks do pretty solid damage. Like, it's deceivingly, actually. But it's more you want to save yourself and stay in the fight as long as you can. W off cooldown when you're low. Get stacks. Just constantly do stuff and be a pain in the ass, generally. That's, the, that's how you want to play Silas because that's how you will survive and also kill and be a use to your team. There is no playmaking potential other than, wow, you live that? What the fuck? Silas is mainly played in the mid lane. Uh, this is really good for him as it encourages constant fighting and roaming because he does have some mobility tools. Uh, and basically, it's just to give your team advantages with when it comes to either roaming to get kills, um, getting mid advantage so that you can get dragon easier. And plus, when you roam, you get to steal some juicy ults when you can. And, you know, if you steal an ult, you're probably going to kill someone on the enemy team. That's a win-win in my book. You could also play him top lane. It's like mid lane, but in solitary confinement. I've had some disgustingly good games in top. Fuck. I need to keep going with this. Got it. I mean, this is a Zork. point where Cho'Gath's probably ahead of me. No one. You feel it. Uh, no. You okay, you both hit six. Right. Oh, Riven's yeah, yeah. there, you're dead. Can you R him? Ooh, that's... Oh, and he lives? Possibly? Oh my, it's just top dip. <laughs> it's so top dip! Drew! And some catastrophic ones. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey! Hey! I was just wondering if I... Oh, wait. Okay, so now let's move on to the League Universe page. Silas is mentioned in three different stories and one comic. I won't be talking about the Lux comic because it's... It's the Lux comic. It's it's for Lux. If I do a Lux video and I talk about the Lux comic here, it looks kind of stupid, don't it? The Recruit is a lovely short read about a new member of Silas's regime going on a raid. And even though he's a nice lad and doesn't want to kill the innocent, because, you know, that's kind of bad. Peer pressure works! What can I say? Guys, team is trying to drop me with mushrooms. It's Just say no, bro. Peer time. pressure is evil. No, peer pressure's the good way to do it. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah. how I'm God. Me and my homies crazy. love peer pressure. Turmoil isn't actually focused on Silas, but instead focuses on what his actions have done to Demacia. We also get to see Cythria of Cloudfield. Riot, please make her a character. She's so cool. She's so cool. Sorry. Uh, Cythria is tasked to escort a mage and two mage seekers from the border to their capital, Demacia City in Demacia. It's like Quebec. Uh, that's generally the gist of the story. I really like it. I really like it because... We It's, a, it's such a good story. Please read it. It, sh it really does show how Silas's revolution starts shaking Demacia's century-old foundation, and how it just breaks down and everyone's mentality starts to shift in a way. It's so interesting. I love it so much. The last story is The Shackles of Belief by Anthony Reynolds. I hope I said that right. It's a story about how Silas actually survived traversing the Freljord, even though he was drastically underprepared. It has some really fun moments, like Silas nearly dying from hypothermia. Twice. Second time was because he tried to wield a true ice weapon that freezes your heart if you aren't iceborne, so that was kind of his bad. Uh, luckily, a shamanka named Thorva saves his ass and convinces Scar Mother Virna not to tear him a new asshole. Eventually, Silas makes a trade with the Winter's Claw so that he actually helps them, and they help him take down Demacia. They're more in it for the pillaging and fighting and violence. But, you know, it's still a win in his book. Oh, and in the end, Silas does a little bit of flirting with Thorva. It's pretty good. I like it. It's cute. Uh, also, uh, another fun fact is that the story came out around the same time that the Freljord Silas skin came out. 
So this is what Silas looks like right now in canon until he does something new. And that's Silas. He's a lovely butcher, slaying sheep and swine alike. He fights for freedom uh, for not just himself, but all mages. He's kind of in it for himself, let's be real. And that's how you must play him for the people. For the people. You always play him for the people. You must communicate with your team and you must work together. Damn, Caitlyn's actually nice. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Disgusting. Muted. You're all muted. I don't want to communicate to my team. Uh, Alright, I hope that was comprehensive enough. I mean, I know I kind of ogled about um, the stories and whatnot. and I've kind of let loose a bit when it comes to these voiceovers. I hope that's better. I don't know. I like it more like this. It's too dry when, I, uh, when I'm when i not putting my emotions into it, I guess. So, uh, I might make a whole video on, like, Silas' Revolution and the, the plot, everything going on. It's cool. I didn't bring it all up, like, his motives and whatnot, just because, like, this is a kind of a smaller thing where it has a little bit of everything about Silas in it. You know? I, I can't do an entire introspective, but um, I hope you liked it. I, I, love, do I love doing these. Um, just tell me what you want, you know? Uh, this is kind of the it. This is kind of it. the end of the video. Follow me on Twitter, Twitch. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. Um, tell me who you want to see next. I don't really know who I want to do. Um, yeah, have a good one. Stay safe. Uh, wait. Just more dives. <gasps> wait, he still dies for sure. Oh my. I'm built better, bro. I'm built better. You know, that's tactical too, because now I still have two stacks. Oh, like true! Hulk. Sound like Hulk Hogan. Now listen to your brother! Now listen to your brother! I'm built better! I'm built better! Wait, wait, what else does he say? Uh, the N word? <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> uh.